the whole idea of leading a life as a human being is that you're faced with challenges, they have the of our you have to know how to control everything. If a person doesn't have the of of anything, so that's so life is not worth living then. There's no challenge in living. You have to have the of our So the whole period from Maimon Hasina till the beginning of the building of the second day of this when Ashim then Sagadala prayed to Akonish Bhakha to be Mabata the Yatsahar Bhavadizara. So there was big, tremendous Yatsahara Bhavadizara. After the Mavatala Yetzahara, so there's no more Yetzahara left. After so little Yetzahara is minor Yetzahara. So that's what the Talmud says, the Yetzahara of our Pikursus became strong. So that's what they say, Mishikilkalu Haminim, when the Apikursim started to tumble that they don't, they don't believe in Olam Abba, his kino, the rabbis introduced that every time you say a brochon of Esamik, the Shisemin, Olam Abba, Olam, to emphasize the fact that we do subscribe to Olam Abba, this was from day number one of the Baishani. You see, from the Pesukim in Echemi like that. From, from the first day in the Tkufa's Baishani. The whole Kriya Satar as we have it today is described in, in Nehemia. Ezra Klein got the first Aliyah and said, Baruch Hashem Lambor. And then they say, there, yeah. he said, Min Ho'elam Ad Ho'elam. So Mishikil Min was the first day. So it's interesting. The Gemara has a tradition that HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells men, Barasi Yetzahara, Barasi Latara Tavla. I instilled within man a Yetzahara. And, and the antidote to that Yetzahara is to learn Torah. So apparently the Kozman that there was one, the, if there are doctors in the audience, they know that. For every makhla you, you recommend they should take aspirin? It depends what they have. They have cancer, the aspirin is not going to help. If they have to have a mild headache, you take aspirin. If you have something else, you take something else. The drugstore is full of different drugs. So every time there's a different makhla, you need a different, you need a different cure, you need a different drug. So Kozman that the major Yetzirah was the Yetzirah about by the Zohar. So the major Torah Tavlin was Torah Shibitzah. So the main Limit Torah was Torah Shibitzah. We don't have so much Torah Shibal Pef and Kufa before the Bayishen. Have a little bit. Mishnah is had. Two matters Torah Shibitzah. Yoda Koyen. Mishnah Shkolem has. Some Dina. Halach is Mamashim Yisina the hat. But to develop the Midash Torah and Rashi and to develop all of this, that was mainly later on. Name is Shikil Kula. I mean, after. When the Ashik Nes Hagadala was successful in being the Vatulat Yetzahara, so the Bodhisattva had to give a different Yetzahara. So that's when the big Yetzahara for Ati Kursus, the Minos, the began. So then the Gemara says, the, the Seder Roilam is a history book that was written by the Tana Rab Yesi, Rab Yesi ben Chalachta. The Gemara, every so often, will quote snatches from the Seder Roilam when it's relevant to Allah. So there's a line in the Seder Roilam, this happens not to be quoted in the Gemara. Seder Roilam has a line, Mishu. After Mishimesh and Chagas Chaim Malachi, after these three prophets were the beginning of this period of the seven days of Mikdash, and when they died, Votla Nevuah Mi Yisrael, or Mekan Diyelech, there's no more development of Torah Shibachsah. Mekan Diyelech, Hat Oznacho Ushmat Direch HaKamim. The main limit of Torah should be concentrating on Torah Shabbat Peh. The emphasis should be on the Torah Shabbat Peh. And that's how the Gemara has in the first parak in Boba Basra. The Gemara talks about the Gulu HaSida that we hope will come very soon. So the Gemara has commenting on the Pasuk and Novi, Gam ki yitnu bagoyim ato akapsem, yitnu mizeloshim masnisen, learning Mishnayis. So the Gemara says, Enis on the Golem el v'skus limer ha Mishnayis. The Gulu HaSida will be in the Skus of Lima Torah Shabal Peh. Apparently the Torah Shabach Sav is the Tavlin, emphasizing Lima Torah Shabach Sav is the Tavlin when the Yetzirah you're dealing with is the Yetzirah of Abba Dizor. When you have the Yetzirah for Apikursus, you have the Yetzirah for Minus, so the Iker Tavlin, Torah Tavlin for that, is to emphasize Torah Shabbat Peh. It doesn't mean you don't learn Torah Shabbat Sab at all. You can, you can. Torah Shabbat Peh has to do with putting together all the pieces of the Torah Shabbat Sab. You have to know how to dash in the Torah Shabbat Sab. But the main emphasis should be on the Torah Shabbat Peh. So that's apparently the major change that occurred at the uh, at the time that the uh, that the Chachamim the Anshik Nes was successful in being, being the battle uh, the Yetzirah of Avodah It's interesting. The Gemara describes uh, Hillel was the chief rabbi a hundred years before the destruction of the Second Beis Hamikdash. Second Beis Hamikdash was destroyed in the year seventy. So the Gemara says hundred years before Hillel was the chief rabbi. So the Gemara says Hillel used to say. But he would participate in, in the Simpsons, Beis HaShe'evo, it was mainly run by the Rabbanu. 
Because the whole Simchas Beis Hashem, the celebration was that they were celebrating the fact that we do subscribe to the Torah Shabbat Bet against the Tzduken, who didn't. The whole thing was really an advertisement. It was a whole tamula, a whole tool <laughs> to advertise the fact that we subscribe to the Torah Shabbat Bet. So Hillel would participate, so he would say, Em Anikan, if I'm here, Hakoka. Em Anikan, if I'm not here, Mikan. The whole Simcha is worthless. So all the commentaries in the Mara find that statement so strange. Hila was known to be a very humble person. How does he get up and say, if I'm here, every, everyone is here. So Rashi is bothered with the Kasha. So Rashi says, like in the davening, we say, Ani vahu hoshiyano. So Ani vahu are two names of HaKadosh Baruch Rashi tells you, you look in Parsons Bishalach, there are three psukim in a row. Each Pesach has 72 letters. So Rashi quotes from Kabbalah sources to take the first letter of the first Pesach the last letter of the second Pasuk, and the first letter of the third Pasuk, and the second letter of the first Pasuk, and next to the last letter of the second Pasuk, you'll get 72 names of HaKadosh Baruch Each name has three letters. And Ani Bahu are two of these 72 names that consist of three letters. It's the Rashi interprets what Hilo said, Amanikan, if the Rabbani Shalom is here, Hakokan, then, every, then everything is worth it. It may not be if the Rabbani Shalom is not here, if there's no Ashur Sashkin, Amanikan. But others learned that Hillel was just saying, Amanika, if I'm here, I'm the chief rabbi, I represent the Torah Shabbat Peh, Zakta HaKolkan, then there's what to celebrate. If the rabbis are not here, if the representatives of the Torah Shabbat Peh are not here, so what's the whole Simcha Space Hashem all about? The Poshib Shah, Amanika means me. Doesn't necessarily mean the way Rashi interprets. Torah Shabbat Peh consists of different parts. The Raman writes in his Hakdama to the Pirush Amishnayis, Torah Shabbat Peh consists of different parts. It consists of Perushim Ham Kubolim Lamashim Misina. We have the Pesach that says that on Sukkot we should take pre eggs hodr. What kind of a fruit is it? So our tradition has it that it's referred to an Esra. We have a Pesach in Chumash that says when someone harms someone else physically, Ayin Tachasayin. So we do not understand Ayin Tachasayin to be an eye for an eye. You don't poke out his eye. Ayin Tachasayin means mum. So the Ramam says that these and many other traditions are Pirushim HaMakubalim Lamashim Misina. That's what the phrase means. There are a lot of phrases in English that are not to be taken literally. We all know. Americans speak English one way, Canadians speak English a different way, British speak English a different way. In each variation of the language, there are certain phrases that have certain connotations. That's the Pirushim English. That's what the phrase means. So we have certain Pirushim HaMakubalim Lamashim Misina. That pre the means an extra. And Ayin Tachasayim means mom is not to be taken literally and so on. Then you have, the Ramam says, a list of halachas of Moshe Misina. Let's say the tefillin have to be black. There's no way to read that in between the lines. Stones are half and cup. There's no midah shatar and adreshes. Or that the Nisah Hamayim, that we read Paschal Halacha, Nisah Hamayim and Arav Alam is is purely halacha of Moshe Misina. It's not figured out by Roshas and Nitzu. Then you have all of the dinim that the Chachamim developed over the course of the years by reading in between the lines of the Chumash. And the Ramam quotes from the Gaonim, the Gaonim were of the opinion that every single din was told to Moshe Rabbeinu HaSinah. Every single din in the Shulchan Aruch, every biblical din there I said, was told to Moshe Rabbeinu. So the Ramam says it's not true. The Chachamim in every generation had the ability to darshan the way they understood it. They look in the Chumash and they see the Shinu Haloshin and the Pasuk from singular to plural, from masculine to feminine, an extra above, a missing above, an extra you, a missing you, and so on and so forth. A klal of prat, a prat of klam, and so on. In every generation, the Chachamim Darshan, the way they understand. They didn't have to have a tradition for all this. The Ramam says this is an embarrassment to assume like the Goyim, that every single day they took the passage in the Talmud and the Midrash and literally the Kol Mash and Talmud Vosik, Vosik Lacharish, Whatever a short time of Chacham is going to come up with the Chiddush, everything was Nama la Moshe Misina. So the Goenim took this literally. Every single din was told to Moshe Rabbeinu. So the Ramam says, how can you have so much Machlaikis? And every page in the Talmud is Machlaikis. means they forgot. They forgot 98% of the whole Torah. They forgot. The most precious thing that the Jewish people have is the Torah. And we forgot so much. So the Ramam said, that's an embarrassment to say like that. And he says, it's not true either. They have Pirushim Maham Kubbal and Moshe Misina that Ayin Tachasayin means mom and the means Esro. That was a tradition they had from Moshe Rabbeinu. The tefillin have to be black and you didn't need Sachamayim Salach and Moshe Misina that they had a tradition. But the other dinim that you need three Hadassim or that uh, whatever, all the other dinim that are read by reading in between the lines, all the Midrash Atar and the Reshisbem, the Chachamim in every generation darshan the way they understood. 
In fact, the Gemara describes in Masech and Shvachim that during the period of the Vice Mishnah, for 410 years, while the first place on Mikdash was standing, they did Nesach Hayai in one way. They poured the wine on the Mizbech in one fashion. And then after seven years of the Churban Bayis Rishon, when they rebuilt the second place on Mikdash, the Chachamim then hung up a sign on the new management, and we're going to do the Nesach Hayai differently. And there were people who remembered. There were old timers who remembered the way they did the Nesach Hayai the first time. The Psukim say in, in, in Chagas Chai Malachi, in Ezra Nechemi, it says, when they were celebrating the building of the second Beis Hamikdash, there were old timers who were crying. This is not a Beis Hamikdash. How does this compare to the first Beis Hamikdash? There were a lot of old timers around who remembered. So how did they have the right to do that, to change the Nisach Hayayin? And the Svasemis and his commentary on the Gemara and Zvachim raises the question. You need to say that for 410 years, the whole period of the Beis they were never yet say properly the mitzvah of Nisach Hayayin. They didn't do it right. The Chachamim and the Mishnah and the Gemara describes the way they did it during the period of the second Beis Hamikdash. So the answer is no, it's an Ishken Kasha. The Svasem gives a Shvera, Teretz. Alpi Hasidus, Alpi Kabbalah, he doesn't give up in Nigva. The Pashtus is, Ein Lecha Le Shefet Shepi Amecha. That's the Koyach of the Torah Shabbat Peh. The Chachamim in every generation, if they're qualified, the Chachamim in every generation, if they're qualified, they know how to learn, if they have uh, enough knowledge of Torah, so then they have the right to darshan the the way they understand and to change, even though the practice for 410 years of the vice region was one way. The Chachamim and the Dating, they knew that Shlaim HaMelech built the second base on and he instituted Nisa Chayah in one way. They knew all the Tzadikim who lived, all the Nevi'im and all the Chacham who lived during the period of the first base on practiced Nisa Chayah in one way. And nonetheless, they looked into the Chumash and they said, we don't think that's the way to read the Psukim. They read the Psukim differently. So that's the Allah. Eloha the Shefet Shep Yamech. Elo Bialadi Relikim Chaim. Kol Zman the Chacham said one way. That was the Allah. When the Chacham said differently. So the Allah is to be followed the way the, the second Chacham said. In fact, there's a, an interesting Pasuk we read on Shabbos Chalamai Tzukas, meaning is that we read Kohelas. So you have in one of the opening Tzukim in Kohelas, it says, En Kohelash Tachas Hashemesh. There's nothing new under the sun. That's a simple translation. So what is the Tachas Hashemesh? Under the sun, Ba'ala Mazer. Nothing is new. History repeats itself. And everything already happened in the past. No one should be shocked about anything that happens. History is repeating itself. So Rashi quotes from the Medrash a totally different interpretation. <coughs> Shemesh is an allusion to the Torah. Because the Gemara has a comment on the Pasuk in Baruch Nafshi. This world is like uh, Finstenish, it's like a uh, nighttime. So the Mesil Sishon explains at night, it's dark outside if you don't have any uh, street lamps. So you can make two types of mistakes. You can see a person from a distance and think that it's a lamp. You can see a lamp from a distance and think that it's a person. So the two types of mistakes are you can think that something is much more important than it really is and something is much less important than it really is. You can make a mistake think a human being is a lamp. You can make a mistake think a lamp is a human being. But in the people make a lot of mistakes. It's, it's choshech. People don't know whether this is a mitzvah, this is an aver. Some people celebrate Yom Atzmut and some people say kinnis on Yom Atzmut. Mamish min ha-kotze la-kotze. Opposites. Opposites. There's so many other things. A man is withholding a get from his wife, so the half of the community says, he's doing a mitzvah, and everybody else says, he's doing an aver. What do you mean he's doing a mitzvah? He's doing an aver. So many different opinions about everything. Every step of the way, they're chiduki teyots. So the Gemara comments, this world, in a certain sense, is like love. It's very hard to know what's right and what's wrong. So the Rabbani Shalom gives us the Torah. The Torah is supposed to give us illumination. So the Torah is referred to in Kohelas as the Shemesh, because the sun gives illumination. That's what we say in the davening. The Psukim and Chumash like that. Psukim and Tanakh like that. We say, the meaning is that we recite the Dabin Hashem Oyri, starting from Rosh Chodesh El. So the famous Medrash says, Dabin Hashem Oyri, Barosh Hashanah, B'yishi B'yam HaKippur. B'yishi B'yam HaKippur, the Baruch Hashanah gives us a Mechila, Mechila Sa'avay Nesifa, gives us sins. And that's a issue in Medrash is, that's a Medrash says, like Poshim B'Shan, the Medrash is that, or the Mauritian was created on Rosh Hashanah. When we say, B'tish Vey Nibra Ha'olam, we really mean B'chach Ha'elo. The six days of creation began, the 25th of Elo. And the sixth day of creation was when Adam Arishan was created. The first five days are prehistoric. There was nobody there. There was no was there, but there were no human beings there. So the first day that people were around was the Yom Ashishi, the Sheshmei Breshis, when Adam Arishan was created. That was on Rosh Hashanah. 
the day he was created, he was commanded by Yitzhak HaShem al Gimal HaOdam Lema, he was commanded and given not the Sheva Mitzvah, but enough, he was given the six Mitzvahs. Eva Menachai wasn't given until later, they weren't allowed to eat any flesh until after the Mavo. So he was given the Mitzvah, so that's called the Dabar HaShem Ayri Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is also a Zman Matan Torah Seyim, but it's not the Zman, it's the Zman Matan Sheva Mitzvahs Ben Enoch. It's the Zman Matan, the six Mitzvahs that were given to Adam Rish, but that's Ayri. <laughs> That's a Ha'ari, that's Ha'ari, and then this Ha'ari Sefer. The Roshon gives us illumination from the Cheshka Sa'ilam Azeh by giving us mitzvahs, by, by learning Torah and by observing the mitzvahs. That's how we know the difference between right and wrong. So the... <coughs> Medrash that Rashi quotes on Kohelas interprets the Pesach Ein Kohodesh Tachas Hashemesh instead of Torah. And the rest of the world, outside of the world of Torah, there's no Chiddush. In the world of Torah, there's a lot of Chiddush. You go to a base Medrash, ain't based on Medrash below Chiddush. There's always a Chiddush every day. And the Medrash has an expression, in the Bezen Shalmailah, in God's heavenly court, in heavens above, every day there's a Chiddush. In the Bezen Shalmat, every day there's a Chiddush. In the rest of the world, there's never any Chiddush, and everything is the same as it always was. So they once asked the Chazanish, what do you mean? In the yeshivas, when they study Baba Kama, so they get the same Gemara Baba Kama that their great grandfathers used, the exact same Rashi, he touches everything in the same page. Even if he used the Steinsalz Gemara, it's a little bit, but the words are exactly the same. The exact same Gemara has the Kudus. Everything is exactly the same. In physics and biology and psychology and education, every field, every year they put out a new textbook, so sometimes they just change the pictures and they fool you into believing you gotta buy a new edition. But most of the time, they're not just changing the pictures. Everything, they discovered something new. They discovered so many new things in biology and physics and, 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 and medicine in the last year. You have to have a new textbook and give a whole new, even in psychology, education, you have to give a whole new presentation of everything. So other Abba Faket and the whole world outside, they're a Chidush and Mulaton. And they're making fax machines and, and airplanes and, and everything. And blueberries, blackberries, all, ki all kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> they never had this before. Kula Chidush, everything is Chidush. And the Torah, once in a while, in the yeshiva, they come up with a chiddush. The Baruch Shalom appreciates the chiddush. The Baruch Shalom appreciates the chiddush. There's a posseg in Shiraz the Baruch. After the Jews had a wage of war, and Eretz so the Jews were successful in the battle. So the Baruch says, Yifchar li'im chadoshim, oz lochim sh'orim, mogei merov haremach v'aboi melech v'yisrael. So the simple meaning of the posseg is, Yifchar li'im chadoshim, the Jewish people chose to worship Abba the Zohar. They, des they decided to worship a new god other than the Jewish god. Oz Lachem Sharem, they were punished and there was Melchama in the cities. They had to go to battle. And the Jews were not prepared. They didn't have any weapons to fight the war. And they were at a tremendous disadvantage. And nonetheless, HaKadosh Baruch Hu helped them and they were successful in battle. That's the Pashib Shah. And the Medrash, Yaakov Shemani, has an additional level of interpretation in God's different. Yivchar Elohim Chadosh HaKadosh Baruch Hu appreciates Chidush Eter Elohim Abad Azorah So the Medrash interprets Yivchar Elohim Chadosh HaKadosh Baruch Hu appreciates Chidush Eter And that's why to make HaKadosh Baruch Hu happy Kibar Yochel Oz Lochem Shorim In the Yeshivas we wage Melcham Tashal Torah We wage Melcham and we come up with Chidushim Because the Rebbe Shalom appreciates Chidushim he appreciates Chidushim, but not Shinuyim. That's exactly the difference. You see, one of the 13 principles of faith that describes orthodoxy is that uh, the laws of the Torah never change. The laws of the Torah are immutable. The world keeps on changing. So the demon apply differently if, if it's a different Metziah. So in Hilchus Bas B'chalav, you don't have just one Sif in the Shulchan Aruch. You have many Simon and many Sif. You have many chapters and many paragraphs in every chapter. If it's like this, then it's awesome in our It's like that, it's awesome in the Rabbans. Like that, it's Mutter. So the Mitzvahs of the world keeps on changing. So a lot of times the Dinam are changing it means the application of the Dinam change. The Dinam are always the same. If the Mitzvahs changes, then, then of course we're going to have to apply a different sif in the Shulchan But the Dinam of the Torah never changed. Zos Atar Lossi Mochlefes, there's no Shinui in the laws of the Torah. But Chidish there is. And a person has to be very learned in order to know what's the difference between a Chidish and a Shinui. A Chiddush is what the Rabbanu Shalom appreciates. If Chara Lekim Chadosh Ma, Kodesh Baruch Hu appreciates Chiddush Yitayr. Oz Lach Mishorim, so we want to wage Macham to Shaltar to come up with Chiddush. But Shinuyim are not accepted. A person has to be very learned to be able to know what's a Chiddush and what's a Shinuyim. 
So again, the yes, the chazan ish, how can Rashi quote such a statement from the Medrash on that pasuk, Enkel Chodesh Tachas Hashem, outside of the area of Libin Atar, Shemesh is the Torah, which gives illumination to our lives, that we know what's right and what's wrong. There's no Chiddush. There's only Chiddush in the area of Torah. There's Kula Chiddush in the world of medicine. If a doctor will practice medicine today the way he practiced medicine five years ago, even last year, they'll, they'll take away his license. Medicine, everything has changed. Physics, everything's dead. Everything, they keep on printing in the newspapers, in all the entire magazine, they keep on printing, keep on discovering new things. That's why every year there's a new textbook on physics, a new textbook, there's a new presentation on everything. How can you say there's no Chiddush? So the Chazanesh explained that when HaKadosh Baruch created the world in Sheshit Smebrezis, he set down all the principles of physics and mathematics and, and biology and so on, and those principles never change. Now they're just discovering what the principles always were, and then they're applying all the principles. But Taka, nothing changed. There is no Chiddush. But in Torah, there's Mamash Chiddush. If a Bezd in a later generation comes up with a new Psaka, Meshit Feinstein came up with a lot of new Psaka, and many, all throughout the, all the generations, all the Gedalim came up with new Sokim on Biblical Dinam on Dinam Der Isa. We just said, in the Baishrishan, they did the Nisach Ayayi in one way. In the Baishani, 70 years pause in between, Baishani and the Chachamim decided we should change it. We should read the Psukim differently. We should change it. So that's called the Chiddush. We're not saying that this was always the Din. During the period of the Baishrishan, the Din is what, the way the Chachamim said, and that's Kufa. Nikan al this is the Din now. The Achreinim have a machlekes. There's a... The Chidor wrote many, many svarim. The Chidor died at the age of 83. So some claim that he wrote 83 svarim. And each sefer is a whole sefer, not some uh, little chapter. Each sefer, a ganzer sefer, he wrote a few encyclopedias, alphabetically written encyclopedia on, on, on uh, Midrashim, encyclopedia of Halacha, different, very fascinating svarim. So he has one of his many fascinating svarim. We have around, we have over 70 svarim by the Chidor. We don't have 83, that may be above a mice, but we have over 70 for sure that are, that are available in print in the bookstores. So one of the swarms that is available in print is a Sefer Megillas Rus. He has a whole commentary. So he discusses the topic of Amayne Belay Amaynes, Mayavi Belay Mayavis, was this a halacha Moshe Sinai Rus was the great grandmother of David HaMelech. And there was a question, is David HaMelech Roy to serve as a Melech? The din is leyav amayne b'kal Hashem. How can Rus Amaravia marry Boaz and then have uh, Dovid Amelach as one of his sons? Should be posel love at the court. How can? How do we allow him to be the Melach? So the Gemara says, no. There is a din mayavi below mayavia. A male who converts from the Maravim is not allowed to marry a Jewish girl, but a girl, a woman, is a Maravia. Rus Amaravia was a woman, so when she converted, she was permitted to marry. So there's a big discussion in the commentaries on the Gemara and the Rishonim. Is this a halacha of Moshe Misinai, that a Moabiyah, a female who converts from the nation of Moab, is permitted to marry a Jewish man? Or was this Nidrash from the Psukim? Al So it's unclear in the Gemara, was it a halacha of Moshe Misinai, or was it a Drosha? And if one should assume it was a Drosha, then the Chidor has a discussion, he quotes a dispute. When a Chachamim in any given generation develop a din based on the way they read the Psukim, the Torah Shabbat Peh, in the beginning of the Baishani, they read the Psukim differently, how to do the Nisach Hayai. So do you declare that this was always the din from the days of Maimon Haisin Hayat? Or do you say, no, this is a Chiddush, the din only applies Mikan al We just developed this insight now, so the din only applies from now on. So that's what the Chazanish said, the din only applies from now on. That's called a Chiddush. In the world of science, it's absolutely not so. If they discover something new in physics or chemistry or biology, it's not that they, they just invented it. They didn't invent it. They discovered that it was always like that. And Shashis made gracious. It's always like that from the day the world was created. <coughs> or they'll discover that the Teva changed at a certain point <coughs> in the history of the world. It's not from the time that we discovered it. It's not Mikhail Ha'avot. It's not Mikhail Ha'avot. It's the glory of Muslim Afrib is always so. So that's what the Chazanish interpreted, En kol chodash tachas Hashem, is to no real chidushim outside of the limud ha'ter. Limud ha'ter can have mamish chidushim. And the Chachomim read the psukim in the Chumash and the darshim by reading in between the lines and they come up with new dinim. These become dinim mikan al-abod. These become biblical dinim mikan al-abod. The Gemara says, we have a tradition that Bezen Shalmaila is maskim to whatever the Bezen Shalmaila says. The Rama has another interesting point. And the Ramam, in the introduction to his commentary on Mishnayis, discusses Mishnayis represents Torah Shabbat Peh. 
So the Ramam describes what is contained in Torah Shabbat Peh. So he says, Allah from Moshe Messina, Perusha Mam Kobolim from Moshe Messina. Then you have all the dinim, the bulk of the Torah Shabbat Peh are all of those halachas that were developed by reading in between the lines. That's the majority of the, of the, of the Gemara is that. Then the Ramam says, also included in part of Torah Shabbat Peh are the dinim de Rabbanu. That's an interesting insight. The Ramam seems to say explicitly that when the rabbis come up with the Din de Rabbanon, it becomes a part of the Torah Shabbat Pen Min HaTorah. And when you learn the Din of the Rabbanon, it's considered a mitzvah of Talmud Torah Min HaTorah. Many of you may remember Rav Salvechik, Zuchar Laroch, he used to give a shir for the Balabatim every Tuesday night in Manhattan. There used to be a shul on 80th Street and Broadway, Maria. It, it was uh, an office building, so they rented one floor. There was always a music uh, class upstairs in the middle of the shit. We'd always have them playing piano upstairs. Then in the summertime, in, in, uh, in uh, May, in June, when it would be warm in the buildings, so they had, had to open up the windows so you hear the honking of the cars outside. So, so for many years, they had the base like Nesim Maria. It closed down already. So Rav Salvechik spent over 10 years, I think maybe over 15 years, giving shear every Tuesday night on Gemara Brachas. So I remember I was there the last couple of years after I graduated college, I was able to attend. So I remember they made a big seal when they finally finished Brachas. They were so excited to make the seal. Uh, so I remember he mentioned that the seal, why did I choose to learn Brachas? Most of Gemara Brachas deals with Dinim de Rabbanah. So the whole Talmud Torah that we did was only with the Rabbanah. Min HaTorah, it was Bittl Torah. It was only Talmud Torah with the Rabbanah. So maybe it would have been a better idea, I should have learned Zvachim. Well, most of Zvachim is Dinim der Isa and a little bit Dinim der Rabbah. So it would have been pure Talmud Torah der Isa. Maybe it would have been a better idea. So he said, he doesn't think that's a valid question. He thinks that all the Dinim der Rabbanan become a part and parcel of the Torah Shabbat Ped Min HaTorah. That's what the Raman writes explicitly. So they just didn't mention it. That's what the Raman writes in his introduction to the Pirish Hamishat. But he's giving you all the different parts of the Torah Shabbat Ped. So the Raman writes, all the dinim the Rabbanu become a chelik of the Torah Shabbat Peh. That's probably why we have a principle in the Gemara called the Tikkun Rabbanu, Kein Der Aisa Tikkun. Whenever the Chachamim introduce a din the Rabbanu, so they pattern it after dinim the Aisa, because he wanted to blend in to become part of the Torah Shabbat Peh. So it has to be able to blend in. So it has to be built on the building blocks of, of the dinim the Aisa. You can't just invent a new concept in the Rabbanu. A lot of times the Chachamim had a certain concern they were worried about something, so they made the Takana the Rabbana. But the way the Takana functions is not always in accordance with the concern that they had, because they had to make it called the Tikkun Rabbana, came their eyes at Tikkun. They had their concerns, but the Din the Rabbana had to be patterned after a already pre existing Din of their eyes. We shake a lulav all seven days of Sukkot. So the Mishnah says that shaking a lulav seven days of Sukkot was only in the base of Mikdash. <coughs> Lulav nito ba mikdash kol shiva ba medina yam echor. Pasuk says, Ulakachtam lachem ba yam arishan. The first day of Sukkis, you shake a lulav all over the world. Usmacht melechne Hashem al kech meshivas yamim. In the presence of the Vashon, in the base of mikdash, you shake the lulav all seven days. After the destruction of the second base of mikdash, the chief rabbi was Rabbi Echem ben Zakai. He was chief rabbi of the Gemara says for about 40 years. Before the Churban Abbas, during the Churban, after the Churban Abbas, added up to about 40 years. So the Gemara says he made nine takanas. One of his nine takanas, a lot of his takanas had to do with the Churban Beis HaMikdash. One of the takanas was, we should make a Zecha LaMikdash, which remember the fact that such a mitzvah used to exist. It's going to be a long way till we're going to have the rebuilding of the Beis HaMikdash. So it's going to be more than 70 years, that's what he felt. So he made a takana, we should shake Lulav all, every day of Sukkot Zecha LaMikdash. So the Gemara has a machlek, is the Yisei Brochana. On the first day of Sukkot, he can say, Baruch Hashem, Kedushan of the Mitzvah, Yisab, Yitzibanu, Al Natil Oslulav. The Rabbani Shalom commanded us to shake a lulav on the first day. But Shalom never commanded us to shake a lulav on the remaining days of Sukkot. It's a Takana Sabechem and Zakai. So how can you say with a straight face, Hashem, Kedushan of the Mitzvah, Yisab, Yitzibanu, and Shekha V'chazav? So the Gemara has a mach like Yisamaran. Do you say a bracha or not? So the Gemara comes to the conclusion, yes, we do say a bracha. Doharaya. When we light Chanukah candles, we say a bracha. When we read the Megillah, you say a bracha, Kiddushan of the Mitzvahs of the When you fulfill all the Mitzvahs, the Rabbanon, the, the accepted Tzak is that you recite the bracha, Kiddushan of the Mitzvahs of the So what do you mean? Where is there a Pasuk Nochomish that says you have to observe the Din of the Rabbanon? The Din of the Rabbanon, the Rabbanon. How 
can you how can you say that the kitchen and mitzvah is So the Gemara quotes that this fluky psukim in the chumash. What is really the source for this? So the commentaries on the Gemara explain what it is. They have a mitzvah of Ahava Hashem. Twice a day, when we recite Kriyashma, we say, Yahavta Hashem Amakecha. You should demonstrate, Ahava is not that Jew at heart, I love God. No, Ahavta Hashem Amakecha, you should do pu'ulas, you should do activities to demonstrate. It's not just a chavis al this is a chavis al This is something you're obligated to do, to act out, to demonstrate that you love HaKadosh Bokas. How does a person demonstrate that he loves? How does a person demonstrate that he loves his parents? How does a person demonstrate that he or she loved their spouse? So if I'm going to wait till my wife tells me ten times to please take down the garbage, or please go to the store and buy something that she needs, I'm going to wait till she keeps on nudging me, so that demonstrates that I don't love my wife. If I surprise her and I do it before she asks me to do it, before she even tells me once, I'll have I ever do it. So if I would do it before she would ask me, or I would surprise her on a birthday, on a wedding anniversary, if I would remember when the birthday and the wedding anniversary would be, okay, she always has to tell me after midnight, she tells me you missed it again. <laughs> so, I just remember we got married on election day. Whenever election day is, that's when I say happy anniversary. <laughs> yeah, election day is a different day. <laughs> so, when a person surprises, when he or she surprises the spouse, a person surprises the parents, and he does what would make them happy without them asking to do. That's a demonstration of Avo. So that's what the Mishnah says in Masech HaSad, the Zohar, the Dafyemi people just learned this Mishnah a couple of weeks ago. The Pasuk in Shir Hashem says, Ki toivim decha miyoyim. A strange Pasuk. I appreciate, God is telling the Jewish people, I appreciate your demonstration of your love for me more than wine. What is that referring to? Very difficult Pasuk. The whole Shir Hashem is difficult. So the Mishnah says, Chavivam alai divrei seifrim yosim miyayin shal Torah. The Rabbani Shalom appreciates when we volunteer the Dinim de Rabbanon, he appreciates that more than when we fulfill the actual mitzvahs in the that he commanded us to do. He commanded us to do mitzvahs, he's better than the mitzvahs, he's going to burn if you had him. So you do the mitzvahs, it doesn't then necessarily demonstrate that you love HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Maybe you're doing the mitzvahs because you're afraid that you're going to be punished and get it, but when you volunteer above and beyond, you know what would make HaKadosh Baruch Hu happy, Kibayahu. You know what direction he wants you to go. He gives you the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. So if you understand what the spirit of the law is and you go even past what he asks you to do, that's a demonstration of Abbas Hashem. So that's what the Mishnah understands, the basis of all of the mitzvahs, the Rabbanon is the mitzvah of Abbas Hashem. We want to demonstrate that we love our Kodesh Baruch Hu, so we go above and beyond what he told us to do. If you go above and beyond and so make a, a, a yontif, uh, a, a naya, celebrate sukkis in Cheshven or something, so that's Paul Tosif, you're not allowed to do that. So a person has to be very learned. You have to know what is the letter of the law, what is the spirit of the law. To know what the spirit of the law is, you have to know a lot of the letter of the law. You have to know kola terukula, to know what the spirit of the law is. So that's what the Gemara quotes the Pasuk, Shalavicha v'yageidcha zikeinecha v'yomuloch. Ask the Talmud HaChachomim. Ask those people who are knowledgeable, who know a lot of the letter of the law, they'll be able to tell you what is the spirit of the law. And what would Kevayocha make HaKadosh Baruch Hu happy? What would please him? What's a method of demonstrating your Abbas Hashem by going above and beyond what he asked you to do? You see, if you take the A-train, those who are familiar, you take the A-train to Washington Heights, take the A-train to 181st Street, so that's Yeshiva University. But you still have to walk, uh, a 10 minute walk from the station. So the cash effect is like, why do you stop at 181st Street, go to the next stop? And so the next stop is the cloisters. The next stop doesn't take you deeper into it, it takes you further away from Yeshiva University. You have to know, if you want to go one stop further, the Bunch Hall gave us 630 minutes. I want to demonstrate I love God so much, I want to do above and beyond, I want to make Him so happy. So sometimes you're going deeper into what He wants you to do. You're going above and beyond what He asked you to do, but in the same direction. If you know what the letter of the law is, then you can figure out what the spirit of the law is. You cannot give a what would make me happy. Like, what would make my wife happy? If I take her out on a wedding anniversary, on a, on a birthday, whatever, I buy her something, fine. We, we know it would make my wife happy, fine. So what would make HaKadosh Baruch Hu happy? Have to shalavicha v'yageicha z'kenech v'yamaloch. Not that that pasuk is the mocker. That's not the source, the binding source for the obligation to observe mitzvahs there are That's not one of the 613 mitzvahs. The pasuk just means to say you have to consult those who are very knowledgeable to know which din and the will fall under the category 
of Kitoiv and Dedech and the Yoyim Chavim and Demir Seif and the Yoyim and the Yen and Shalter. All of this is part of the Torah Shabbat. This is what the big celebration was all about on Sukkot. Every Sukkot for many years during the last years of the Bayashen, they used to celebrate, they would hold you. They would have the Rabbana, would hold rushes and would, would juggle and would, uh, they would sing and dance and everything in the base on Nikdosh, celebrating the fact that we subscribe to the Torah Shabbat Peh. The Torah Shabbat Peh includes all of this. Allah has Lamosh Misinai, Pirushim Ham Kupolim Lamosh Misinai, the word Priya Chodar refers to Manasrik and so on. The new dinim that the Chacham have developed by reading in between the lines of the Psukim, these become biblical dinim. And even the Ramah writes, even the dinim de Rabbanon that the Chachamim institute, if it's instituted by a knowledgeable Tamat Chacham who knows what the, lyric, what the letter of the law is, knows what the spirit of the law is, so this is a meaningful din de Rabbanon. So then you say, those dinim de Rabbanon blend in to become part of the Torah Shabbat Tem in our When we all get married, the Ramam has a fascinating statement. The Ramam says there are three ways to create marriage, to do Kiddushin. You can have Kesef, Shtar, or Bia. So the Ramam says, Kiddushi Kesef is Torah Shabbat Peth. And the other two are based on Pesukim and Chumash. And then the Ramam says, writes, Kvanoga Kol Yisrael the Kaddish B'Kesef. The minig by the Jews is, as opposed to, minig by the Jews is to use Kesef. What is he referring to? As opposed to the Muslims. As opposed to the Karai. As opposed to the Karaites. There are three different groups of Karaites. There were, Karaites from Europe, from Asia, and from Africa. And each one had a different shtick. Which part of the Torah Shabbat Peh they don't accept, and how they understand the Torah Shabbat Peh. They had different, and they all live in Eretz Yisrael now. That's, that's uh, the least of their problems. That's the least of their problems. Banut has problems with all the Karaites, but that's the least of their problems, how to deal with the Karaites. On Tzad HaShav Shabbat, one of the things that all the three groups of Karaites have in common is they don't believe in Kiddush Kesef, because it's only Torah Shabbat Peh. So the Ramam says, Yisrael, by the Orthodox Jews, we choose Davke to be Mekadosh Bekesif, to demonstrate under the Chuppet that we subscribe to the Torah Shabbat. But we have many practices like that. You have the meaning of eating chok, hot, hot food on Shabbos. So in Shulchan Aruch, the commentaries quote from the Rabbi Nizrahi, the Balamor, Masech and Shabbos, that this meaning of having hot food, it's such a tirche to know a blech, and what can you do with the blech, and what, what you, how close can you put it, how hot can it be, can you take it from the refrigerator, it's refrigerated, it's so complicated. So just have cold cuts on Shabbos, what do you need the whole soda for? So Rabbin Israqi says, no, if a person doesn't eat warm coffee, tea, chocolate, doesn't have warm, some, something warm on Shabbos, but you have to check maybe in upper curves, because the Karaites translated the Pasuk literally, you're not allowed to leave any fires up. They used to sit in the dark on Friday night. So Friday night, the food would be warm. They heated it up on Friday. Shabbos morning, it wouldn't, wouldn't be possible to have any warm food. So the Orthodox Jews to demonstrate the Bedavka, we subscribe to the Torah Shabbat Peh. We do believe in the Blah, so the Bedavka have to have something warm. If you don't have some warm food on Shabbos, so in Shulchan they quote Sorak B'dikah Achra, they have to chip. We also have a meaning. The Raman writes, you can perform a bris milo with a knife, with a sharp knife or with a sharp piece of glass, or the sharp piece of wood, or a blade of grass, if it's sharp enough to cut. The Gemara in the beginning of Chumah says you can use, you can use a knife, you can use the scissors. Then the Ramam says, Yisrael, the minute by the Jews is, who else does bris mila? The Arabs. But what is he talking about? No, call Yisrael, we do a bris mila with a knife. Man said, what is he driving at? The professor Simcha Asaf, he used to go, did a lot of research into the Cairo, and he was, uh, he was a big professor of history. He was a member of the Rabbanut, a big Tamachot, a big Dayan. So he published in one of his volumes on the Karaitic literature, the Karaites held, the Jews are very, are very insistent, all the Jews have to keep the mitzvahs the way I said, that, that the Chesedim insist, and it's not, everybody says, so the Karaites insist you have to perform this meal with the scissors, because it says so in Tanakh. It says in the book of Yoshua, and they had the big national bris milah for 40 years. No one was observing bris milah, only Shevet Levi, Shanri, Masech, Abrisli, and so on. So when they came to Teretz Yisrael, soon after they crossed over the Yarden, so when they came to city Gilgal, so they all performed the bris milah on all the babies who were born in the last 40 years. So Yeshua ben Nunes came in, Nikach Lecha Charbos Tzuri. Shuv Molot Bnei Yisrael Shein. How do you translate Charbos Tzuri? So the Karaites translated two knives that cut one against the other. And so scissors balaz. So they insisted that if you perform this meal of not using a scissors, 
You're not Yankee. So it always bothered me, why don't we use the scissors? Oh, if you want to cut, you're cutting around. Why do you pull up the oil and cut like this? Why shouldn't you cut around? So the answer is, the Ramam says, Pranogu Koso, the Orthodox Jews will use anything but a scissors. Because the Karaites insist you have to use a scissors, so we want to demonstrate that they're wrong. We subscribe to the Torah of Alpha that that's not shot in that post. On Sukkot, we have to celebrate this and emphasize it and all year long. And you saw the Golan of the Beskus, Liban HaMishnayis. Now is the period of time, since the days of the Chagas Chaim Malachi, since the days of the Anshayt Nesag Dola, when there were Mavatali Yetzahara of Avodah and the new Yetzahara of Apikursis came down into the world. So the Tanoim had a tradition that the Ikalimud HaTorah, the Torah Tavlin, to serve as the antidote for the Yetzahara, has to be the Limud of Torah Shabbat. So on Sukkot, celebrating the Simchas Pesach Shevin all year long, you have to emphasize our commitment to the Torah Shabbat with all of the aspects of the Torah Shabbat. Have a good Niyantif. Yeah. 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 Yeah.